When you think about some of the greatest Fortnite players in the entire world, you think about Booga, Clicks, Dubs, or whoever else. And you probably associate them with having a huge brain. I don't mean like literally having like a huge brain, like their heads are all big and they look like aliens or something like that. You know what I mean, okay? I'm talking about 200 IQ or whatever gamers are calling it these days. Regardless, this is usually attributed to how they make absolutely crazy plays. Most importantly, these top high IQ pros seem to be pulling rabbits out of their hats like they're in the movie Now You See Me or create sophisticated outplays that none of us average Joes could ever imagine. This is why, my friends, we're going to be breaking it all down for you guys and talk about how to develop high IQ just like the pros. You mean to tell me you can teach people to get smarter? Hey, welcome back, old man Rudy. Creepy as ever. <laughs> yes, we are, sir. What's going on, guys? This is your guy. That's right. This is your friend. I'm your number one fan, Keith Allen. What is going on? I want to let you know right now. I know some of you guys are saying, oh, the sky is the limit. The sky is the limit in Fortnite. Listen, the sky is not the limit in anything that you can do in your life. This is going to be the best year of your life. You guys ready for that? Are you ready for that? But you got to believe it first. We believe in you. So keep going. Connect with me as soon as you can on my Instagram. I would love to hear from you. So today I am so excited, I hope you can hear it in my voice, like genuinely excited about this video because no matter how skilled you are, from complete bot, which there are many of you out there, no shade on you, if, if that's you, I'm glad that you're here, we're all trying to grow, to top competitive performers, hey, we all have room to grow. This topic is just one of those things that I think you're really going to like what we got to say. Speaking of liking things, what a coincidence, that's so weird. Why don't you like, wink wink this video, just an idea. You guys know the drill. It takes literally a second and it tells us that we're doing a good job. We put a huge amount of time to deliver daily videos and all we ask in return is some love in return. You know what I mean? So if you're looking to take your gameplay to the next level, I recommend that you check out, when you can, Instapro, where we have live 24-7 coaching from some of the best players, not just in the world, but like in the universe, for real. Head on over to ProGuys.com right now. Trust me, you're not going to regret it. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to sit back, relax, get my favorite snack. You already know what it is. It's that bunch of crunch, and let's get it going. Okay, so first and foremost, we really need to talk about what high IQ really means. I know, I know, you probably see this term being spammed in virtually every Twitch chat, to the point where I kind of feel like the term has just lost a lot of its meaning. People will call any cool looking play a 200 IQ, bro, and I feel like it's just best to lay some groundwork regarding developing high IQ. So, in reality, high IQ can really be broken down as making smart and calculated plays that really allow you to think three, four, even five steps into the future. The concept of high IQ should be expressed in one just pop-off play. Although we have definitely seen some short bursts of insanely smart plays, it's also worth noting that making those individual or micro plays really sprouted and flourished due to the fact that really good players practice in a very macro sense, in a very huge sense, right? So today, I'm going to be pushing away from the notion that having a high IQ means always taking a risk to get the high reward. The real smarts come when you assess when that award greatly exceeds the potential risk that you may experience. Some of you guys are like, what the heck did he just say? You guys know I love using analogies. So here's another one. If you want to build a tall and beautiful building, which is your Fortnite abilities, you're going to have to lay an equally beautiful and large foundation to build on. And guys, the foundation is this video. To get a better idea of what I mean by smart and calculated plays, let's talk about picking your battles. Picking your battles is something that pro players can just calculate with ease, like it's nothing, because it really comes down to risk versus rewards. So keep that concept. You know what? Everybody just say together. Come on. Risk and rewards. Say it one more time so I can believe it. Risk and rewards. Now, I feel like a teacher in a classroom. This is kind of awkward. But you know what? You better listen to me. I'm going to send you to the principal's office. That was the place I was way too familiar with as a kid. Oh, so you better listen and do well. You don't want to go there. Anyways, picking your battles can be broken down in many ways from mid game to end game or even how you want to secure the elimination. So let's roll some footage on my boy clicks so I can really show you what I mean from here. Right at the start, Clix is getting ahead of the zone and making his tunnel rotation. On his way to safe side, he stumbles across another rotator and instantly places a floor and cone to gain control of the situation. Here is where our first decision comes to play. Does he decide to go for the edit and commit to the fight or continue making his way to zone? Hmm. Well, let's see. He hasn't been contested or spammed by anyone else so far, which leads Clix to believe he has an opportunity to 1v1 this guy. Also, if you guys can tell, he's chilling on the mid ground, which means he won't have to worry about low ground warriors that are trying to make their way back to the safe zone. 
Also, if you look here, they aren't high enough to realistically have to worry about people that are contesting high ground. All in all, seems like deciding to get aggressive here is safe, but Clix only has a split second to decide this. Let's see what he ends up doing. And just like that, Clix ends up making a good decision editing down and lands a huge pump body shot and instantly giving him the upper hand in the fight. But there's another problem here, guys. Look at this. The opponent is running away. Where you going, buddy? Come on, come on back. Hey, come back. Fair enough, I wouldn't want to fight against Clix either. But now our good friend Clix has to reassess the situation and decide whether pursuing the engagement is worth it. And what strategy should he take to safely keep his foot on the gas? Okay, so first off, Clix noticeably slows things down once a third party sends some AR fire his way. He takes a few seconds to gather his bearings. I feel like I'm an old English man from like the 1600s. His bearings. And he finds out just exactly where that pesky runaway went. You can't fight someone if you don't know where they are, unless you're like a psychic. <laughs> Sorry, dramatic. Anyways, now Clix makes a new box towards zone just as he spots the guy who he knows is low. Instead of continuing his tunnel on the same level that he was initially planning on, Clix drops down a level to a lair that he knows is unoccupied to continue the battle. Come on, man. How do we know it's unoccupied? Hey, old man Rudy, good question. Well, the guy he was fighting just built that tarp, and I almost guarantee you that this is why he felt so comfortable dropping a tooth the enemy builds. This micro readjustment was actually way safer than any other strategy that Clix could have used, simply because he read the scene perfectly. When I break this down to you, you might feel comfortable with the results, but Clix doesn't get the luxurious time to make his decisions. The entire clip was 15 seconds long. 15 seconds long, and each decision was made in less than a second. We spent way longer than that making our decisions like we're playing in slow motion. On the topic of decisions, decisions are much more complex than just fighting. Deciding when to pull the trigger and to take high ground is an equally important move that can make or break your game. You might even tune in to watch Twitch.tv and find yourself screaming about how the pros get hyped every single time for free. Is that just me? <laughs> uh, it's not you. Uh, this is kind of awkward. <laughs> Anyways, high ground can look so easy when a pro does it, but it's just so much more difficult when you and I try to do it. Here, let's take a look at Goshan as he clutches an insane trio in-game clutch with no other teammates alive. Sean plays his role very cautiously, as one should. He's trying to rack up the placement points with a bit of luck so he can win that epic victory royale. Boom! One kill. Once he gets the thirst, the first thing that pops out in my mind is that there's a launch pad on his dead body. Sean seems to notice this too. Good for you, Sean. As he's making a desperate attempt now out of the 10 ticking zone, uses the launch. Height is clear, and he snags it. This is a really good opportunity, which was only able to come to fruition because he had the awareness to stay calm, and he realizes that he had the launch pad. Most of you guys, myself included, can't count me out, simply just don't have the awareness sometimes to put ourselves in situations where we can just take the high ground and put ourselves in spots to actually get that dub. This, my friends, is what separates us from the best in the world. They wouldn't be called the best if they didn't have the goods to back it up. But you know, if you're still feeling uneasy about taking height, hey, I got a solution for you. Let Booga show you another alternative. All you gotta do, which is really, really simple, okay? Really simple. Just kill the entire lobby before zones start. <laughs> yeah, okay. But for real, getting high ground is sometimes impossible to get. But don't worry, we still got you covered. Let's talk about playing the mid ground. Guys, playing mid ground is often just as easy as just holding height, especially when you're playing large team formats that practically offer unlimited mats. I think Booga is a shining example of someone who consistently plays the mid ground, and he makes it work too. Let's take a look at how Booga plays the tunnel like a champ. We could talk about uncontested tunneling, right? But there really isn't any fun in that. Instead, let's take a look at probably the most unlucky scenario when the entire lobby tries targeting you and see how the best responds. All right, so Booga gets hit with a rocket right at the start, and he's basically a target for the rest of the clip. His teammates is running low on mats, go figure, and there are tons of enemy builds in front of Booga and company. At this point, many people would freeze up and just chalk up that L like, dude, this is just not my game. But not our friend Booga. Look at this. He finds the least path of resistance, which in this case is dropping down below the enemy bills to continue his tarp out. There aren't really many options in this scenario, okay? But the quick thinking from Booga extends his and his team's life in the scrim match. 
Finding the least path of resistance is just really important, especially in a scenario like this when the entire lobby has your name on their minds. Let's review what we went over today. You now know what high IQ really means. It doesn't mean hero plays or short Twitter clips, and it doesn't mean you have a big head with a big brain. It means that if you play smarter overall and think multiple steps forward, there's going to be an increase in IQ. With that, you're going to be able to pick up your battles wisely. Yes. See Clix's reference and how he uses his huge cranium to put himself in a more ideal spot to confirm the LM. So simple, it surely puts a tear in my eye, <laughs> yes. And now you finally outlast 90% of the lobby, you did it. Now it's time to make that play. Do you look for a height or find the easiest path to get to the next safe zone? We discussed both options, so it's now time to use your newly acquired 200 IQ brain to make that life or death decision. The goal for this video is to give you the tools to make good decisions and obtain better game sense. So to actually put these tools into good use, you gotta do what the pros do every single day. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, your favorite word of the month, practice. The only way that you're gonna make smart decisions on a dime is if you apply yourself, right? And maybe one day you're gonna make it look so easy just like the pros. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is your guy, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Hey, connect with me as soon as you can on my Instagram. I would love to hear from you guys. Look, this is your year. It is your season. It is your time, man, to be great and do things that you've never done before. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give us some loving. Hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe with the bell for more. Why not leave a comment and tell us what your favorite pro tip was? With that said, it's been a pleasure and an honor. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.